When we last left off, Brian was working on the control rod and the uh, smoothness of the, the system. Yeah, we've been here before. Anyway, uh, so uh, I'm still was still working on this uh, in the other video and um, really narrowed it down to this right right uh, control here. Um, so we trimmed a little bit more. Um, and gosh, it, it's like you don't want to take off too much, but you got to take off enough that it it freeze things up and uh, taken off as much as I could on the front so I had to start really looking at uh, the connector in the rear portion of it which was interesting um, you know the, the control stick for the left hand side of the plane it, it's pretty much always been smooth it's really never been much of a problem but you know you connect one and then the rods are connecting everything together so everything just kind of feeds one to the other um, so I spent a fair amount of time again and uh, you know it's 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 this is a tedious process to do because um, you just have to be patient and work slowly on each piece so I took it off again and trimmed a little more and put it back on um, and you know the thing is you have to put it all back together to be able to test it and see if you're if you're there so not quite there yet um, so we're back again all right so we we'll take it off again and um, see how it is now. Um, honestly, I think I got it. Um, it's definitely improved. Um, so the side to side moves very, very freely. Um, but also meant that I needed to pull off the rear elevator control tube here and really work at it again. Um, I, I had to remove a couple of pieces that I'd already riveted in, um, which, you know, going backwards is never the fun part, but. Uh, you know, this has to be done right at this point in time. Otherwise, it's just going to be a problem going forward. Um, I took some of this time since I had this off to get some of the wiring tidied up a little bit. Uh, I'm getting some of those uh, click bond uh, tie downs that uh, those wiring or the, the zip ties are going to wire or attach to to help really snug those wires up against the side panels because um, I just don't like how close they are to the, the control rod there. Um, so I just got a little air tool there with a, a, a bit, a round bit on it and, uh, just take off a little bit at a time. Um, I think it's better too. Um, you know, it, it's not as smooth as this, the, the aileron up front, but it's definitely improved. Um, so I, I, I mean, I don't have a lot to judge it against, but, uh, I, I feel like I can move it through the paces pretty good now. So got it all put back together, tested it again, um, and this one's a little bit more because it's it's not just this piece, but it's like now you got to connect the rod to the sticks and um, you know the the autopilot servo there shouldn't be too much in the way, but uh, um, you know it's still in consideration. And then the putting the rivets back in is just a real challenge when it's the the rear fuselage and the center fuselage are together. But I got it. Um, you just keep working at it. Um, the one thing that I thought was interesting was. Uh, the vertical piece there with the big hole in the center of it, the lightning hole, um, has a flange on it going all the way down. And with the flange in place, it really interfered with the um, the, the rudder cables. Now there's, there's a black sleeve, you can kind of see it, on the rudder cables. So it wasn't rubbing, um, but it caused the cable to have to bend out and around that piece. Um, it just didn't look right and the, the piece is incorrectly uh, or installed correctly um, so I'm not really sure what that was about but I did just carve out a little bit of that to allow for uh, a straight line of that um, you might remember from before um, I had all the floor panels out and some of the interior panels and uh, basically got those prepped so uh, my father-in-law could come over and help clean that material and get it all going um, there's this is uh, probably a little bit early for this, but uh, you know, I, I'm waiting on a couple things, and so I'm just working on uh, the the parts that I can. Um, the one thing that's really frustrating is I'm I'm missing a part for that center console, and I know I have it. Um, it's around somewhere, but I can't find it yet. Um, so I'm I'm gonna keep building as long as I can without it and uh, uh, hopefully it percolates up to a surface somewhere. 
I'm sure what's happened is I've just set it down somewhere and it's just covered up and uh, as I continue to move through pieces I'll, I'll move it and then all of a sudden you know it'll appear because um, I, I remember seeing it in the house somewhere so anyway um, so this is the other side of the rear skin that I was uh, attaching and um, it, it, I've still got a zip tie that I need to tie down in t inside um, but I wanted to work on the GPS and the XM uh, antenna location as well as get the COM1 antenna moving along um, and I couldn't do that without this skin in place so uh, I went ahead and installed it and, and got it all situated so we're, it's ready to go. Um, I'll, I will have to remove it briefly so that I can cinch down the zip tie that's inside um, but uh, this is on for right now. Um, the one thing that's kind of interesting is the build doesn't it, 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 it comes with a COM1 position and there's really not much discussion in the documentation that I've been able to find around that. Um, the uh, Midwest identified just literally by marking up one of the, the, the drawings uh, on where it goes and so it was a matter of just like well this looks like it's in the right spot and drill the holes and start installing it that way. Um, there's some rivet nuts that need to go inside the uh, or on the skin for the inside of the um, the center console of the airplane uh, so we're back out pulling the rib nuts I have to admit when I started doing the rib nuts on this project I had no idea what I was doing and now it's uh, I've got a pretty good process down um, I, I may have mentioned in other videos that I do epoxy each of the rib nuts um, because the, the amount of I'm not putting a massive amount of torque on these but uh, you know, I don't know if anybody's ever had rib nuts where they just sit and spin in the hole because they weren't secure. Um, it just drives me nuts when that happens. So uh, it's a two-part process for me. It's uh, um, the mechanical connection of the rib nut being drawn into the uh, bonding portion, and then it's the the chemical portion of it of the epoxy that's keeping the the rib nut in place as well. So those two things are um, definitely going to make sure that those things are secure and they're not going to move around. Um, having watched uh, my friend Aaron and his plane, uh, there's there's still a ton of in and out of the airplane before that back seat goes in. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to do is just get a board out and uh, cut it to size for the rear seat so that I can kind of protect that section of the airplane. Um, so when I'm in and out of the airplane and, and doing things and the back seat's not in there that uh, it just kind of keeps things in place so just grabbed a piece of scrap plywood that I had there and uh, we cut it out to the same size as the rear seat um, we'll put that in a little bit later when I'm done with that section anyway so the moment of truth for the luggage area which has probably been in and out a couple dozen times um, I felt comfortable enough to be able to move forward with this um, and uh, just you know, got it in there and riveted it in one night. Of course, after I got it in, I went back and looked at the plans and realized that I didn't put the sound dampening on the uh, underside of it. Um, so we'll have to work on that a little bit. Um, it'll be a little tricky because it's back and underneath, but I think if we use the top side in the rivet pattern, we can cut a, a, a pretty reasonable uh, shape to that and then stick it in there. Um, again, that may be one of those things that I don't do until after um, we get a little bit further along here. Um, and the rear comm section, that's another one that's sort of a, hmm, um, they don't really provide a really good path for the wiring to come up through the fuselage. So uh, the suggestion is, is to pop a hole in the floor panel on the left hand, or I'm sorry, what we're looking at now, the right hand side, but the left hand side of the, the fuselage. And it has to be large enough that the um, connectors can fit up through it. So it's a fairly good size hole. Um, you know, I, I'll make sure it's all tidied up. But anyway, um, you know, normally wiring doesn't kick my butt too badly, but uh, getting the, um, uh, the this BNC connector attached was uh, a bit of a chore. And um, I actually called up a buddy of mine, uh, Don, to come over and help me with that. And he's an old ham radio guy. I knew he'd know how to do it. And of course it took him longer to drive over to my place than it did him to show me how to do it, which um, I appreciate his time on that. 
Um, so we're back and I'm, uh, let's see here, fiddling with the um, uh, center console portion of things. Oh yeah, I, so the click, click bond uh, attachments. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm putting on some standoffs uh, of the click bond uh, attachments and I'll use a, um, uh, it's, I don't want to call it a D-ring, but it's not a D-ring, it's, it's an Adele clamp. Uh, to manage the wiring as it comes out, um, and, and I, I'm I'm very comfortable with that because you don't know, just want to eliminate any potential vibration, and uh, with those Adele or the, with the click bonds, you have to give it about 24 hours for that for that to be well cured. Um, and some of the the skins that we were working on earlier with my father-in-law cleaning those up, I wanted to put those in place and just sort of get an idea of how those go together. Um, you know, I'm not done with everything, but Anyway, um, so that's where we're at. Um, this will post about the week of Oshkosh. Um, it'll probably be a short uh, August video, but uh, we'll catch you up when I get back.